Okay, so I have a JVC XLM407. Oh, thank God for low contrast writing. There it is, XLM407 automatic CD changer. And I haven't even powered this thing up. Once again, I'd like to bring you along before I do anything. One telltale sign over here on the side of the unit. If anybody that recognizes that, let me know. I certainly know where this is from. Circuit City Repair. I'm not sure if this was maybe a warranty unit or somebody returned it, but look at the date on that. 2 16 of 96. And yeah, once again, haven't even powered this thing up. Oh yeah, definitely a service tag. It went in for service somewhere and it has a claim number on it. Yeah, there we go. Audio is gargled, not garbled, and only one track is playing. Okay, well, first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing on. I'll try to get you situated here where you can actually see the display. Okay, power has been applied. I definitely see something in the display that is a very good sign. So, will anything do anything? Open. Um, it seemed to have shut off before I even pressed the button. Did you see that? So yeah, I've got a red standby light. I'll hit the power button again. I don't hear anything happening inside. I heard something. We'll give it a second. Uh, negative Ghost Rider. Nothing's happening. Where's the freaking play button with this low contrast? There it is. Play. And no, nothing. Okay, well, let's pop the top off of it and see what it looks like inside. Well, there it is in all its glory. It's certainly been a couple of days since I've seen one of these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and reapply AC power to it. I heard something. Did you guys see something move? Oh, it's trying to do something. This loading arm actually moved. Now it's binding like it's pulling back and it shut the power off. Power it back on. Oh, look at that, it's tweaking. Oh, what is going on? It's tweaking completely sideways like a double disc is stuck in it or something. I don't hear a motor running though. Not like a belt slipping or something. That tells me the belts are probably in okay condition. Well, I'm gonna try to uh, dig a bit deeper into this thing and see what rabbit holes we can actually go down. So I went ahead and uh, I popped out the magazine right here that holds all the CDs. And it's just a simple matter on this unit of just pushing this lever right there. And that just unlocks the magazine so it can be ejected. And I see that it has a tray still out right here. Now I'm not missing any trays in the magazine so I know it didn't come from the magazine. One thing I remember that these units had a problem with was if the tray was loaded in the loading position and it hadn't clamped the disc yet and you moved the CD player, the disc could actually fall out. And let me turn this around. And let's see if I can turn the light on. And the disc would actually fall back underneath where the tray would go. And I think I see See if I can zoom in on it. There it is, right there. There's the money shot. See the, the colors, the green and the blue? That is a compact disc that is stuck down inside there. Let's go back to regular zoom. So as I recall, there were a couple of options on this unit. You could try to finagle this up. And I think, as I recall, if you push it back all the way like this, you can actually lift this tray up and you've got to kind of disengage this little scissor mechanism on the side. And then you can extract the disc out. So let me go ahead and try that and uh, just bear with me one moment, please. Okay, so that was indeed quite easy to get open. Now we've got a couple obstacles to overcome here. I've got it turned kind of sideways. Uh, these are half of the scissor mechanism right here that raise and lower the entire mechanism up and down. So I'm just gonna kinda fold those back out of the way. Now this thing 
is the thing that actually keeps the discs from coming out and uh, it can be removed by just twisting it it's keyed and it goes into a slot right there oh look at that so i need to put that disc back fold that down and then i can just tip this up and look at that there's the disc Oop. it's none the worse for wear at least so probably go ahead and play the majority of the disc but it's not going to play these last couple of tracks because of that crack and is that the only disc yes that's the only disc that i can see that's in there odd that this thing is turned at a weird angle so if i put this mechanism perfectly straight this is kind of canted but i'm not seeing a problem because the three mounting tabs are more or less centered where they're supposed to be and it's on this rubber shock mount it, now I thought they were supposed to be straight, but maybe I'm mistaken after all these years. Uh, I was warranty authorized for these units when they were brand new. Anyhow, the belts actually look pretty good. There's a small belt right here, and uh, it actually runs the sled. And as you can see, I'm moving that, and it's moving the laser out just a little bit, which is perfectly fine. Uh, there's another belt down here, and it seems to be in just fine condition. No problems with it whatsoever that's what actually raises and lowers the mechanism up and down and then i believe this gear this worm gear right here is what runs the uh the lift in and out so now i'm going to try to reassemble this thing and see if we've made any kind of an improvement and just in case this does actually repair the unit i'm going to go ahead and just wipe off the laser lens with a regular cotton swab these are the q-tip branded swabs Moistened, not soaked, with just a very small amount of regular household glass cleaner. Nothing with ammonia. This is a opti optically coated lens using circular motions only. And now I'll try to get this jigsaw puzzle somewhat put back together and see if we get different results. Okay, well somehow, I don't know how, I got it back together. Let's go ahead and power this thing on, see what happens. No disc in it, no cartridge right now. So I'll hit the power button and see what it wants to do hit the power button and we'll try to open the single drawer and it does actually open now i'm going to try to put the customer's cracked disc into it and we'll see what happens here close the drawer and we'll hit play over here somewhere play It's working and it did read the table of contents and it does show that it is playing. So next we'll go ahead and slide the customer's cartridge back into it here. We'll hit stop on the super low contrast keys. And I'll just choose disc number six. And it is playing. It shows it's playing. We'll stop it. Choose disc number five. Yes. Okay, perfect. Disc four. And disc number three. And it shows it's playing. Disc number two. And finally, last but not least, Disc number one. And then we'll stop it. It'll put it back. Open the single drawer. 
or tried to play the single disc and it's playing perfectly. Eject the cartridge, put the cartridge back in. Okay, let's hook up some speakers and see if it makes sounds. Okay, speakers are connected. Let's hit play on the single disc. Penguin Random House Audio presents Louis Lamour. Oh, this must be an audio book. Volume 1. Mysterious stories. Okay, well, let's stop that and we'll go ahead and try to get audio from a disc that might have something other than speech on it. Search forward just a little bit. Let's go to disc two. And it's making sounds. That's excellent. Let's go ahead and try the last disc. And it's working absolutely perfectly. You know you hate when I say that, but it is actually working absolutely perfectly. Anyhow, there it is, the JVC XLM407. Had a disc stuck under the tray, it couldn't complete loading. Now I'm wondering if we just would have flipped this thing upside down, if the disc would have somehow got back into the tray once the tray loaded with the gravity on the wrong side, I don't know. Maybe that would have been a quick fix just to try to flip this thing upside down. Should have tried that. I'm not going to put the disc back in it and retry it. Anyhow, there it is, up and running once again. I'm sorry I couldn't show you the disassembly of this. My head was in the way way too much of the time. Unfortunately, I tried to do a quick time lapse and I just had to keep putting my head in different locations so I could actually see what was going on in here. I certainly apologize for that. But it can be disassembled. I did end up taking the whole mechanism out of this unit. There's one screw in the back, two screws on the side right here. You just have to pull up on these tabs. These cables will unplug. There's one cable right here, which is the laser, and then this cable right here, which goes to the sled and spindle motor assembly. This can be disassembled with two screws. It slides forward and then just flip it out of the way. It does have a single hardwired connector right there. Uh, in the past when I did these under warranty I know I, I just took the screw out right here and went ahead and removed that connector uh, board and just laid that out of the way so I could gain access to this thing much more easily. But it does appear to be working perfectly. I certainly hope you enjoyed what portions of the video I could show you without my head obviously in the way. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. And it does help the YouTube algorithm suggest this video to other people like yourself that might be interested in this compact disc player repair. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. I know I say that every time and I really do appreciate all the views, all the comments, all the support. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Stand by for bloopers. Was if the tray was loaded like that. So we'll choose disc number six.
And look at that, working perfectly. Disc five. And that didn't go as planned. Okay, what's going on? Ah, uh, this one tab popped out, doggone it. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Come on, baby, why do you gotta be like that? Oh, there. Okay, now we'll go back there and see nope it's got to go up one more okay well that'll be b-roll And let's hook, hook up some speakers to it now and see what, if it, well, B-roll. And it also helps YouTube's algorithm suggest this video to other customers or other viewers like yourself. And it does help the YouTube algorithm. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, here we go, power on. Uh, let's eject. The cartridge, oh, good job, shot it right out there. Put the cartridge back in it, choose a disc. That looks much better. 